One of the key things that I use all the time in photography, in video, is something to just bounce light around. In my studio at home, I would just use these things. These are bits of foam core. Basically, it's two sheets of shiny card sandwiched around some foam. It just makes for a relatively stiff, but super light board. You can get these at craft shops, hobby shops, art supply places. You get it on Amazon, you buy packs of six. They're a couple of quid. They're really, really handy to have, but they've got their limits size-wise at least. You can get like A1 sheets, which is nearly a meter by half a meter, something like that. You can probably get A0 sheets, but they start to get a little bit floppy at that point and they get really expensive. Other thing you can use, and these are super cheap as well, is these like five-in-one reflectors. This is a kind of big one, but not, not the biggest you can get. This is really handy as well. Silver side will bounce more light than just the white side. And also they have a black side for negative fill. They've also got a gold side and they've got diffusion in the middle, which is also kind of handy. That's what sort of what this stuff is here that's blowing into shot. Size is a consideration. And as you get bigger, the price goes up a lot because you're kind of moving into that more specialist territory where the little ones are a fiver. Those ones are like 20 to 30 quid. The big ones, can be, you know, hundred plus. And I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not there for that. Also, they're floppy and they need like supports. So you need to use a light stand on them or something like that to, to keep them up. What I was super excited for, that's nerdy. What I was super excited for when I was moving into this place is being able to have big reflectors and big negative fill errors. Negative fillers? Are we going with that? Well, I think we're going with that. And what I'm talking about is these things. These are just big sheets of insulation foam. You buy these from the DIY store, like Home Depot, b and I got these from Wix. They're like 15, 10 to 15 pounds, depending on how thick you get them. They come in these 2.4 by 1.2 meter sheets, which means they're pretty good for full length stuff. And there's loads of uses for these. They're really, really handy. There's also some downsides. For one, they're not freestanding when you buy them, obviously, because they are just sheets of insulation. Two, they're not very stiff. So if you move them around too quickly, they're prone to snap. But I've got some fixes for that kind of stuff. So yeah, they're super light. They're really easy to move around. They also work kind of well as a sound insulation, but we'll get to that. They are kind of white, although these ones are made out of recycled plastic, I think. So they've got like specks of like green and black in there, but mostly they're white and they're reflective enough, I've found. But the other side is also white. So that's something I need to sort out and there's an easy way to fix that. And I'm gonna show you how to do this I'm gonna keep them as full sheets, but these are also really, really handy if you wanna buy a full sheet and just cut it down. They cut really easy. They cut with, um, with like a craft knife. You can use a saw, just like a kitchen knife will probably do. And then follow the other stuff that I'm gonna do. That stiffness issue, that wobble, can be fixed with something as simple as a bit of gaff tape. Basically, all you do is put this around the edge because gaff tape is magic it will sturdy the whole thing up. Also, the edges get dinged really easily and this will just kind of help that not happen as much. It'll also stop them bobbling off because this is polystyrene, you know, the little balls. So, you can also do this with smaller sheets, I've already said that, but the tape will also help the cut edge. So you don't have to be too particular about the cut edge because you're gonna tape over it anyway. So let's, <laughs> let's try and do this. First of all, let's see, hopefully I don't break this. It's got loads and loads of wobbles. So as you move it around, it's got like enough air resistance that it, it just feels like it could break. Hopefully this tape sort of takes that out of it a bit. This is one of those videos that's not a tutorial. It's like, I mean, it kind of is, but it isn't. That's a horrid sound. Such a horrid sound. I can never find my knife. It's over there. Don't actually remember where I heard this tip. So I don't know who to blame if it's, if it doesn't really do anything. I don't, it feels, it doesn't look any sturdier, but it definitely feels kind of sturdier. Let's do the other one. And then if I've got tape left, I go around them again. And 
Next thing on the agenda is to make them stand up by themselves. At the moment, they're great. I can prop them up, that's cool. But there's a lot of situations where I want these to be freestanding. And do you know what? Light stands aren't the cheapest thing in the world, but building a couple of little bits of wooden base for these should do the job of two light stands. So money saved is money earned. Let's go for it. <laughs> Let's go for it. One of the other things that these boards are going to multi-purpose as, is that grammatical? Correct. Is that English? Let's go with it. My little change in privacy screen because I ride my bike in and I'm not wearing this all day. You can almost get away with one. Well, I may have made four extra for no reason. At some point, I would really like these to be, one side be covered in, you know that like acoustic foam that's not really acoustic foam, it's just egg crate foam. You know the stuff I mean, jaggedy, and it comes in squares. This stuff. At some point, I want one side to be covered in that, but I can't really be bothered doing that at the moment, plus I'll have to order it, and it had like a month lead time in the quantities I wanted of it, so that will be coming in the future, but for now, I think, one side needs to be black. So I'm gonna test out some paint on it. Hopefully it doesn't just destroy it. I think it might just destroy it. I'm a little bit worried that it might just destroy it. Like it might just melt the polystyrene. So I'm gonna give that a go now and just do a little tester. But first I'm gonna try it out as my privacy screen. I have to say, I think it worked. If the paint doesn't work, what I'll do is I'll use some of this paper roll backdrop and I'll just cut enough of it and find a way to stick that onto it. Well, let's check this paint out first. It's water-based, it doesn't look like it's melted it. The problem is when you brush it, there's a lot of gaps because it's very textural. I know. Just the thing for it. Paint sprayer. Teensy paint sprayer. Might have to go buy some Teflon tape. You know what Teflon tape is? It's that like non-sticky white tape that you wrap around air fixings and plumbing fixings. Can you hear that? That's because it's not got any tape on it. So these are, these are done, uh, kind of. You can still see that they could, they could maybe do with a little bit of extra, a couple of extra coats. What you hopefully saw that I was doing is I was putting on really thin coats and using one of those air sprayers. You could use spray paint, you could paint it by hand. You get a really nice fine mist that dries really quickly. So you can do really light coats and you can do a load of them. So I did like three or four coats on each of these. Still, you probably still do with like two or three more coats and you think, wow, that's a lot. But usually when you're painting something, you're doing extra coats, you need like four to six hours or 24 hours to let it dry. And you, you know, if you're painting wood or something like that, you need to sand it and whatever. That's not the case here. You do a load of really fine coats, but basically with something this size, by the time you've got to the bottom, you can go up to the top and start again because it's, it's so fine that it's already dried. It helps to have some nice big windows that let the sun in and, 
and sort of bake it dry as well. That certainly helped. Yeah, these are kind of done. That's the, that's the black side of them. And there's a reflective side. And you can use these, you can basically use these as different levels of fill. If you want less shadow, you use this one. If you want more shadow, you use this one. And so if you've got light coming from this side, this one will bounce light back into your face, back into your model's face, and there you go. You've got your shadows reduced. This one will deepen those shadows. It'll give you a much moodier look. Now, I did say at some point I do want to put acoustic tiles onto these. I think I do anyway. I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I am a bit worried that it'll make for a really heavy thing, and I don't want these to be heavy in any way. They're super nice and like portable at the moment. They are supported just on the one side, which I didn't think would work. And I didn't even try it because I didn't think it would work, but it's worked. Like I said at the beginning, these are big. You probably don't need stuff this big for your home studio, but this kind of material is really good. You can cut it down really easily, like I said, and you can mount it up high. So you can mount it as a reflector over someone and not really worry about it falling down. It's also pretty durable, especially like the smaller you go, like obviously in these big sizes, big wobbly thing, but you go smaller, it becomes sturdy. You can also get it thicker and thinner. You can get it half this thick. I don't think it goes much thinner than that, but you can also get it twice as thick, which would be nice and sturdy. I probably should have gone for that. They didn't have it in stock. I just went with what I could find. That's that's it for me. If this build has helped you in any way, probably hasn't, like who's building these? I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.